Welcome to another episode of the Midwest Mindset, episode number 53. This episode, we're going to talk about we're in the middle of the Feel Good February Challenge. And one of the things that I like to talk about is, you know, when I'm trying to help others, when I'm trying to help serve others, I, I you know, a lot of times I want to show the example that I'm that I'm trying to lead. And I don't always feel that great. So I don't always show up the best that I can possibly be. So I today's episode, we're going to talk about just 10 tools, 10 tricks, 10 things that I use in my life to help kind of reset myself for success, how I can try to feel good about how I'm going to go into something that might be unpleasant or a weekend that um, that might be very busy, a lot of things going on, that type of thing. How can I set myself up for success? So these 10 tools are tools that I use personally that hopefully could help you as well. So bear with me and uh, write this down if you'd like to write this down or uh, take one or two uh, key takeaways. Um, but these are these are things that I've I've used where I've made mistakes and where I where I've overcome them by using some of these tools. So let's get right into it. So the first one, one tool that I use to make myself feel better about who I am and what I'm doing. This is something I do if uh, I'm trying to go work out or something, something that I didn't, like I love cardio. I love going, getting after it and teaching classes. And we'll get into that a little bit about that. But one of the things I, I don't love doing is lifting really, really heavy weights. And one of the ways I can get myself to feel good about lifting heavy weights is I can crank up the music. So number one, the number one tool is crank the tunes is what I'm calling it. So, so it really can change the way I, I show up. If I can put on some, some good hardcore, uh, you know, rock music, everybody's got their own genre. Mine is, mine is uh, definitely rock music. If I can do that, I know I can show up a little bit better and I, I just change. I get more excited about lifting weights. And this this stems back from my high school days. I remember, uh, was it was it Brian Uderman? I think was was this uh, football player slash wrestler, somebody that I was looked up to. And it was one of those things where I mean, like I remember when he came into the weight room, he would literally take over the stereo and just turn on some uh, run, um, Guns and Roses and a little ACDC. And I remember the whole atmosphere of the whole room just changed. And so that's something that's kind of stuck with me. So uh, whether you're lifting weights, whether you're exercising, crank up the music as a way to make yourself feel good. So crank the tunes is, is, is tool number one. Tool number two that I use for myself is I get to get outside. So just simply get outside, whether that's just going for a walk or a lot of times what I'll do is in the morning when it's not, I think right now it's 11 below zero. One of the things I do is, is get outside. What I literally try to do is take off my, my socks and shoes and walk outside too. So it's a little bit of grounding, a little bit of kind of centering myself with the earth, but also getting a little bit of sunlight, getting some on, on my pupils, on my eyes, you know, we talk about uh, the space that I work in right now is, is retina. And it's, there's, there's so many different, uh, Andrew Huberman talks about this in his podcast, talks about the Huberman lab is the name of his podcast, talks a lot about the advantages of getting actual sunlight on our eyes uh, uh, first thing in the morning. So the value of that. So just number two is just get outside whether you're grounding or, uh, you know, or if I, uh, maybe you're wearing boots, if it's too cold, uh, uh, wear what you need to, but get, get your butt outside. It really can make you feel better. It's a, another way to change, change things up. So crank the tunes, get outside. Number three is help someone. It's uh, Brett and I have, uh, BJ and I have talked about this before in the podcast where we talk about one of my favorite th commercials that we've ever watched is the one where you see other people doing good things and it, it has that ripple effect. Well, the reason why that is because it makes you feel better about yourself when you're able to help somebody out. Have you ever had that opportunity where you where you saw somebody fall and you're the first person to go help them up? The first person, somebody, you know, whether you're leaving uh, a sporting event, uh, whether you're leaving the office, whatever, you see somebody slip, you see somebody fall and you're the first one there. You help the person up, they're thankful, you, you kind of, you know, get them recentered, that type of thing. It makes you feel good about yourself. So if I want to feel good about myself, I always try to say, how can I serve? How can I help somebody else? Because when I do that, I feel better about who I am. And it's a value to not only them, but it's a value to me as well. So I'm, I'm helping myself as well. So crank the tunes, get outside. Number three is help someone. Get out and help someone. Number four 
is smiling. Going back to the to the Elf uh, Christmas movie, right? Smiling is my favorite, and it's it's goofy. It's it's giving yourself a high five. It's having a little laugh at your own expense. There's huge value in that. It's one of the things I tracked all through the month of January. The more I can just smile, whether I'm walking by a mirror, whether I'm giving my high five in the morning, first thing in the morning, whatever that looks like, it's a way for me to kind of change change how I'm feeling about myself. And I, I always feel better after I'm smiling. Or once again, to help somebody else, smile at somebody else. See the re reciprocation coming back. When you smile at somebody, people smile back at you. So number four is smile. Number five is treat yourself. Now, this is an important one. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about this. Treat yourself. So specifically, using a treat or using something that you're looking forward to after you're trying to do something difficult. So what I tend to do is I try to do something hard, like I will do a cold plunge. And I know that's not for everybody. But what I do immediately after that is I treat myself to either a steam shower or a, a hot cup of coffee. And one of the things that we're, we're finding out more and more is that if you can treat yourself in a two minute window, and, and I think there's a Harvard study, and I, I can maybe link that in the show notes to this podcast uh, but there's been numerous studies talked about. There's a two minute window. I mean, how many of you are, are pet owners out there? Uh, when we try to train a dog, we have that little dog treat, right? They do something we ask them to do. They you have them sit. They sit and you give them a treat. It's that recognition that we develop those habits. It's that petter, patter, pattern recognition. And slow down a little bit as I'm speaking to you. That, that, uh, enables and enhances that habit forming process. So when I mean treat yourself, one of the things that I do is I treat myself after I do something hard, <clears throat> after I do something that's a little uncomfortable. Um, uh, and, and more importantly, in February, when we're doing that difficult challenge, doing one hard thing, <clears throat> have something that's available for you for that treat. And once again, no judgment on what that treat might be, but you have a two minute window to treat yourself after you do something that you don't want to do will allow you to keep coming back and, and having more success at actually accomplishing that to the point where you actually make it a habit. So, um, so treat yourself, whatever that might be. And like I said, mine was hot cup of coffee, a warm steam shower, that type of thing. Maybe it's maybe it's that glass of wine after you do something difficult. Maybe you read, you know, three chapters in a book, and then you you know have one glass of wine or something like that. As within that two minute window, uh, that's your treat. So, I think there's um, some some good science behind that. And like I said, I'll I'll add that to the show notes of this podcast, uh, that study. But um, go ahead, treat yourself. So number six. Uh, meet with a friend. One of the things that I do in order to feel better about myself is meet and, and interact with people, uh, whether that's going to have a beer with one of my buddies um, after a, you know a long day or a happy hour, that type of thing, or in the middle of the work day or middle of the work week, and it's a busy week, <clears throat> I'll see that I have a lot of things that are going to be kind of busy, kind of crazy, and not necessarily stuff I feel great about, right? So what I will do is strategically plant a lunch. I'll call or text one of my buddies and say, hey, let's meet for lunch and, and try to meet up with them. Because I know that after I talk to that person, I just feel good about, about not only our relationship and, and hanging out and catching up where we are, where their kids are doing, how their kids are doing, how our kids are doing. But I also feel better about myself because it's good to be with the people that we like to hang out with, right? So number six is meet with a friend whether that's grab a beer, grab lunch, or you know, even a cup of coffee in the morning. There's a number of people that I'll call and say, hey, let's meet for coffee. I'm going to check in on you. And a lot of times when we do that, we're setting ourselves up to also you know, having them check up on us. So that's number six. Number seven is learn something new. This one I really like, especially with what we're doing um, you know, around mindset. So if I'm I'm getting too stagnant in some of the things I'm talking about, and hopefully I, I'm not getting too stagnant in this podcast, but I always try to learn something new. And one of the things, one of the biggest conduits to that is is reading, pulling out that book that that you that's been sitting on your shelf that you haven't opened up for a while, and just setting it out, setting it out allows me to kind of say, oh, that's something I should dive back into, or I should revisit. 
So learning something new, whether that's you know learning something new on YouTube, there's value in that. Uh, one of the things I did, uh, YouTube, first of all, you can find anything on YouTube. Specifically, um, something that I did was uh, I have a snowblower, right? We live in Minnesota. I think we have the most snow that we've had in a long time. I mean, we already have had a full year's, um, you know, levels out, you know, how many inches of snow for our yearly total already here in February. So we're not even through February and March. And I think uh, Puxitani Phil uh, just saw a shadow. So I think we have six more weeks of that. But regardless, I'm, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. What I'm, what I'm getting back to, though, is on YouTube, I, I, uh, my snowblower clogged up, the carburetor got clogged up, and there was a huge weight at the, the, at the saw and tool place that was going to do the, the reworking of it or take care of it for me. And so I just YouTubed, how do you clean out a carburetor on a Cub Cadet snowblower? And sure enough, there was five different videos there. Watch those videos. I did a number of those things and I got it working for myself. Now I'm not really a handy guy, but I was really pumped after I did that. I guess what? I felt great about myself after doing a few little tricks, just going to the hardware store and getting some ether and some a few things. Cost me a lot less money. I learned how to do it by myself, but I also felt good about it. I felt better about myself. I'm like, hey, I figured that out on my own. So that's just a small example. But I think this tool is is applicable here. You know, whether you're learning something new um, about self help or philosophically, I think there's benefit of that. Or if it's just as simple as is you know clean out a carburetor on a Cub Cadet snowblower, I think there's value in that, and it helps you make you feel better about yourself. So. That's number, that's number seven. Number eight, and we're almost there. We're almost there. Number eight, give yourself a boost. And this can be done in a number of different ways, but this is something we talk about a lot on this podcast is give yourself a boost. Give yourself that little extra um, energy that you need. Well, how do you do that? Well, sleep is a great one. Make sure you're getting eight, at least seven to eight hours of sleep. And I say that because that's something I continue to work on. I'm so used to waking up early in the morning and I also want to, you know, stay up late because I, you know, that's when my kids are kind of most vocal and interactive. So I'm trying to balance that, right? With still trying to be an early morning riser and still spending time, quality time with with family. And so that doesn't mean that means that I don't always get that 7 to 8 hours of of sleep like I'm supposed to. But I know that I can give myself a boost if I'm going into a weekend or going into a busy event by by getting enough sleep, getting that little extra sleep getting even that nap maybe in the afternoon. Don't do a lot of that, but I, I do enjoy um, <clears throat> a good nap to kind of recharge the batteries. Another way you can give yourself a boost is, is um, when I start eating healthier, when I make better choices in the kitchen, it just, it's crazy, but you know, it might not be sexy. It might not be fun to say, you know, there's that bag of chips. I love getting, you know, a, a good salty chip, but, but yet if I go grab a, a bag of carrots instead, and that crunch actually does does help me kind of choose, but I feel better about myself and I don't feel like some of the side effects that I get from a greasy potato chip. So giving yourself that boost, making those good decisions, to give your boost. That's something that I do to, to really help me out. Number nine is walk it out. Um, go for a walk, get out and just, just go for a walk by yourself with somebody else if, if you want to. But one of the things I've incorporated to help me feel better, especially when uh, in this cold winter, when we have a lot less um, uh, ambition maybe to get outside because of the, the, the cold weather, is to go out for a walk in the middle of the day. So a lot of times we're either on Zooms or we're on conference calls um, with work, that type of thing, or we're stuck behind the camera or in our own offices or we're sitting down. Going for a walk gets me just out of my head a little bit. And so a midday walk is one of the things I've incorporated. And this is something that I would love for, for you to do. Even if it's just five minutes, get up and go for a walk. You know, back in the day, they used to have, I was watching Mad Men the other day and they used to have the cigarette breaks and, and you know, the martini lunches and all that stuff. Like they used to do all these like, you know, breaks in the day, whether they were doing something that felt good for them at that time, they were smoking, which isn't good for you, but probably felt good because of the dopamine hit that they were getting from it. But regardless of that, getting up and going for a walk is a way to kind of get you uh, take that little uh, quasi smoke break for yourself. Only instead you're doing something very healthy for yourself. So get up and go for a walk. That's number nine. And then number 10 is my favorite of, of course is exercise. 
the endorphins, the serotonin, the oxy, uh, oxytocin that we get, uh, the boost that we get from, from exercising. So one of the things that I love doing is not only teaching class because that gives me a couple of different things, right? I'm doing healthy things. I'm getting my exercise in, but I'm also um, leading and serving others. I absolutely get such a rush from that because not only am I getting all the the good the good um, the good hormones that help me feel better about myself, but I'm doing and getting back to my absolute why, right? helping serve others to be more self-confident in themselves mentally and physically. Physically, by exercising and being active. Se uh, secondarily, uh, mentally, because of the endorphins and, the, and the, the good hormones that it's kicking in after you do a workout. Like I always say, nobody leaves a workout and says, wow, I, I, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Unless you injure yourself. We don't want that. But, but ultimately, you always feel better. And it's because of this release of those hormones that are that are doing that. That's how I feel better uh, on on most days. So, quick recap here: the ten top tools that I use to help me feel better about myself are these: crank the tunes. Number one. Number two, get outside, enjoy that sunlight. Number three, help someone, S serve others, giving somebody that opportunity. Number four is, is, is smile, giving them a high five, right? Number five, treat yourself. Start to pattern your day by treating yourself after you do something difficult or something that you don't want to do. Number six, meet with a friend, be social, get outside, get out, get out of your own way. Number seven, learn something new, read, whatever that might be. Number eight, give yourself a boost. Give yourself those things that are going to set you up for success. Good sleep, good nutrition. Number nine, walk it out. Go for that midday walk. And then number 10, exercise. Do something and you know where you get that aerobic energy up for yourself to help set yourself up for a great February. So I hope you took one or two of these, these tools and you can incorporate that into your February so you can feel better about yourself and feel better uh, around others. And... I just wanted to, to say that uh, if you are still interested in the challenge, you can reach out to me, uh, P Tyson, the number one at gmail.com. Still join the Feel Good February challenge. Otherwise, keep following and uh, I appreciate you and we'll talk soon.